time for Brooklyn Dodger Baseball. Light up the lucky, it's baseball time. Happy, go lucky, it's Dodger time. Settle back in your chair, there's baseball in the air right now. It's Dodger time. Thank you, Dorothy Collins. This is Jerry Duggan with Vince Scully and Al Helfer. Here we are at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, where we're about to bring you the Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates in a big doubleheader. Today's games, like all the Dodger games this season, will be brought to you by Lucky Strike, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoke. It's made by the American Tobacco Company. Tobacco is our middle name. And the F and M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of Schaefer Beer, America's oldest lager beer. Well, sir, once again, it's that particular moment when the ballpark looks quite familiar. Everything is coming to order. The fans are fastening the seat belts, and that last finishing touch is being made to yield diamond. And it won't be long now, but long enough to reach for a pack of matches, or a lighter if you prefer, and a pack of lucky strikes. Put the two together, a light and a lucky, and man, you've done it. You find yourself genuine smoking enjoyment, because a lucky's a genuine cigarette. All cigarettes. Every wonderful bit of it. All fine tobacco. Ever so mild. Naturally good tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And to this, I can only add what I consider a very smart suggestion. If you haven't tried a Lucky lately, let no more time go by. Light up a Lucky right now. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated is prohibited. Well, on a very fine Sunday Easter afternoon, we're set for a great big doubleheader between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Brooklyn Dodgers. And on the pitching mound, it'll be Don Newcomb going against Vernon Law in the first game here. The Dodgers red hot, opening the season with three straight wins, opening against Philadelphia with a win at Philadelphia, and then coming back to Ebbets Field to post two victories over the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Doubleheader today, and then tomorrow, the Dodgers will move to Jersey City to open up the season in Jersey against the Philadelphia Phils. Had a real fine performance yesterday by young Johnny Padres to win by a 2 nothing score. And uh, Johnny flanked the Pirates and did a very fine job and looked real sharp in so doing. So today, Don Newcomb will go out after his first win of the year. Don, of course, drew the opening assignment down in Philadelphia and uh, was relieved by Clem Labine and went on to get the win. Right now, as we get set to play ball here, Emmett Kelly entertaining uh, fans and on the field. And right now, let's listen to our national anthem. Sunday afternoon, getting settled down now for lots of baseball entertainment. The umpires are coming out, and this one should be underway in just a few moments. So let's run down the starting lineups for you. For the visiting Pittsburgh Pirates, led by manager Bobby Bregan, leadoff man will be Roberto Clemente, playing in right field. In center field will be Bill Verdon. At first base will be Skinner. At third base, Thomas. 
And in left field, Paul Smith. At shortstop will be Dick Rose. The catcher, Hank Foyles. Bill Mazeroski batting in the number eight spot, playing second base, and Vernon Law on the mound to do the pitching. For the Dodgers, it'll be Gilliam at second base, Simoli in left field, Snyder in center, Perillo in right field, Hodges at first, Jackson will be at third, Campanella catching, Zimmer at shortstop, and the pitcher, Big Don Newcomb. Newcomb, 27-7 and seven last year, has an eight-game winning streak against the Pirates with six victories in 1956, two back in 1955. In the past two years, he has won every one of his eight starts against Pittsburgh, pitching two complete games in his two 1955 starts and four complete games in six 1956 starts. He has lost uh, to the Pirates last on September 6, 1954, way back then, 9-7 to seven here at Brooklyn. Vernon Law was 8-16 last year and made five unsuccessful starts against the Dodgers last season, lasting only 14 innings in the five games and losing three times. His last win against Brooklyn was on July 6, 1955, 4-1 at Pittsburgh. The Dodgers have been receiving excellent pitching. In fact, they have not allowed an earned run in the last 25 innings since the uh, overtime ball game down in Philadelphia. The team earned run average is 1.50. So in the three ball games, in the 30 innings the Dodgers have played, there have been just five earned runs, and those came against Newcomb in the first five innings of the 1957 season. So a very fine earned run average for the team, for the staff, of 1.50. LeBron has worked five innings, allowed no earned runs. Magley has worked nine, allowed one run, it was unearned. Newcomb worked seven innings, allowed five earned runs, and Padres with a shot out yesterday. So a real fine performance so far by the pitching staff. The hitters have been doing right well, too. A team batting average of 278, and they've clubbed out seven home runs. So the batters have found the range as soon as the bell rang. And uh, leading the home run parade, of course, Snyder and Hodges each have a pair. Simoli, Perillo, Zimmer each have one. The Dodgers have taken the field now. Jackson at third, Zimmer at shortstop. At second base, Gilliam, and at first base will be... Hodges in left field, Simoli in center field, Snyder, and in right field is Carl Perillo. Campanella catching, and Newcomb on the mound, firing him down here. Lee Walls, the uh, Pirate outfielder who was hurt yesterday, left the ball game with uh, four stitches on his left finger, uh, on his right finger, rather, second finger of the right hand. He was stepped on by the umpire in the play at third base early in the ball game and had to leave, so he'll be out of the lineup for a few days, and Paul Smith is subbing in for him in the Pittsburgh outfield. The umpires for today's game, Burkhardt at the plate, Vargas, Gorman, and Dixon on the bases, and as Newcomb warms up, Burkhardt leans over and also warms up, takes a few looks, pictures as they come in there, kind of getting the old eyeballs tuned up, ready for this one. And uh, Roberto Clemente standing by. We might say right now, it's a long afternoon of baseball, a big doubleheader this Easter Sunday afternoon, plenty of seats here at Ebbets Field, so why don't you make your plans to come on out right now and see a lot of baseball. And uh, right now, stepping in here for a lucky strike and for the play-by-play, here's Vince Scully. Vince? Thank you, Jerry, and good afternoon, everybody, and a very pleasant Easter Sunday to you, wherever you may be. Bob Clemente, then Bill Burton, and Bob Skinner. Should anybody get on, maybe we'll see Frank Thomas. Big Newcomb sends a first pitch in there, and it's promptly lined to right field for a clean single. Clemente makes his turn and holds on as Brillo gets the ball back into Gilliam, and so the Pirates come up, first ball swinging, and Clemente singles to right. And so we have begun. Lucky strike blowing that big fat smoke ring to you. Maybe we ought to be blowing Easter eggs to you today. But our best wishes go along. As Bill Burden comes up. Bill batting 273. Left hand batter, as you know. Good speed. Jackson, although wide of the bag at third, is up on the edge of the infield grass. Hodges holding Clemente on, but Gill will be ready to jump off the bag with a left hand batter up there. Newcomb takes a peek at first. Now Don comes with a changeup that hits sharply foul outside of first and down into the Dodger bullpen. 0 oh, 1 the count. Don Newcomb and Vernon Law in this first game, and the second game we'll find Ronnie Klein and Don Drysdale. Roger Craig will be pitching tomorrow afternoon against the Philadelphia Phillies when we open up Roosevelt Stadium at Jersey City. Denny Murtaugh coaching at first for the Pirates retrieve that foul ball. Manager Bobby Bragan around the third. Big Newcomb comes set, checking Clemente. Now the strike one pitch, fastball, and that's in there. Strike two. We 
There are plenty of seats, especially in the upper deck off third base. There's choice seats, too, and they're wide open. And all the way down the line and out in the outfield. So if you're anywhere in the vicinity of Abbott Field, making up your mind as to what kind of a crowd there'd be today, but well, we have the seats, and we hope you'll come on out with us. Big nuke ready in the strike two pitch. Fastball just outside, moving it away from Burden. One ball, two strikes. Easter Sunday, 1957. And boy, the old song, Did You Ever See a Dream Walking, should be taken out of mothballs today. Boy, there's some pretty people out. <laughs> the one and two pitch out, cut on as a high pop fly and a shallow left. Jimmer going out, Samoli coming on. Gino calling and takes it for the out. Bon Clemente gets back to first. So Verdon pops out into very shallow left field. One out. And here's Bob Skinner. Bob Skinner, left-hand batter. He's a pretty good hitter. However, he's been edged out at first base by Dale Long. Skinner waiting at the plate. Newcomb ready and comes to him. And the fastball, a one-bouncer, short hop by Zimmer. He goes, Dan can't pick it up, and everybody's safe. Zimmer short hopped that ball and tried to feed over to Gilliam, and the ball just kicked off his wrist and dropped to his right, and it goes as an arrow. So had Zimmer been able to shave with the short hopper, he'd have the double play. Instead, he missed everything. And Skinner is safely on at first on the shortstop arrow. So little Jim makes an error, and the Pirates have runners at first and second with one out. And Frank Thomas stepping in. That ball exploded right at Zimmer's feet. Kicked off the heel of his glove, and then when he tried to grab it in his anxiety to get the runner at second, he couldn't do it. Newcomb turns on the rubber now and comes set. Checks his runners and comes to the plate. A fastball a trifle high. Ball one. Zimmer, like any young ball player, is over-anxious. That's why he'll boot most of these. But if he continues to play every day for a while, as Reese, with the idle back, has to sit them out, Don will no doubt settle down. He's just too anxious to pick that ball up and get something started. One ball and no strikes. On deck, Paul Smith. Nuke him in a jam here in the first inning with one out. Turns now and throws back to Zimmer, who one-hands it as Clemente is easily back to the bag. One ball and no strikes to Frank Thomas. Newcomb set, looks to his runners, now works the plate, and the fastball is belted high and deep to left field. Back goes Simoli, Snyder coming over and calling near the wall. Duke takes it for the out. Clemente tags up and then holds. As Snyder throws a one-bouncer about five feet up the line off third. So Thomas hit the ball well, but Snyder going back to the left center field wall, hold it in, and the runners hold. Two down in the first inning, and that brings up Paul Smith. Smitty, a left-hand batter. All for four. He started against Sal Magley the other day on opening day. Hit three fly balls and bounced out once to the infield. Smallest left-hand batter playing left field today in the absence of Lee Walls. Clemente coming down off second. Bob Skinner from first with two outs. Newcomb ready. Looks to his runners, now delivers a changeup that hits slowly down to first base. Hodges up with it and does it by himself. So, in the first inning for the Pirates, no runs, one hit. There was one error and two men left on base. And at the end of half an inning, the Pirates nothing and the Dodgers coming up. We have a big day of baseball in both leagues, so without further ado, let's have Jerry run them down for us. Here's the way it looks on our Lucky Strike scoreboard, Ben. The Phillies and the Giants playing a doubleheader. It'll be Roberts against Santinelli at the Polo Grounds, and nothing in on that one yet. Cincinnati playing Milwaukee, Clipstein against Farm, and a doubleheader between Chicago and St. Louis, delayed because of rain again after a rain out yesterday. In the American League, the Yankees are playing Boston, and it'll be Sturdivant against Sussler, and nothing in on that one yet. Baltimore and Washington, the doubleheader. The first game will be Beeman against Shackles, and at the end of three and a half innings, Washington leads Baltimore by a score of four to nothing. Cleveland playing Detroit. 
And it's no score at the end of one and a half innings with Garcia going against Romack and another single game in the American League. Kansas City going against Chicago. Coleman and Wilson, and that ball game has not started yet. So it's a doubleheader between the Phils and the Giants. Single game between the Red Legs and Milwaukee. Doubleheader between Chicago and St. Louis. American League, Yankees in Boston in one. Baltimore, Washington playing two. Cleveland and Detroit. Kansas City and Chicago also playing one game. And of course, we've got a big doubleheader going here at Ebbets Field today. The Dodgers and the Pirates. And as Vinny reminded you, there are plenty of seats available. So make your plans to spend this Easter Sunday afternoon right here at Ebbets Field and enjoy baseball in the very best. Last half of the first inning, Jim Gilliam steps in, and here we go, right back to them. Well, Junior was brought back to us mere mortals the other day. He was up in the clouds with a 600 batting average, but he drew the collar yesterday. Jim going 0 for 4, so he is now 6 for 15. Gilliam followed by Simoli and then Schneider here in the first inning, no score. Vernon Law looking in to get his sign. Now the tall right hand already and delivers. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike. On one. We're pleased to salute our honor hospital today, the Veterans Hospital of First Avenue in New York. Law back again where it looked like a knuckler and it's outside and low. One ball, one strike. One and one to Gilliam leading off here in the last of the first. No score. Law ready and comes back to him 1-1 and the knuckleball is outside. Ball two, two and one. Just about all the pitchers on the Pirates staff will throw a knuckleball. The 2-1 pitch to Gilliam. Cut on. There's a high fly ball into shallow right. Clemente is calling. It's an easy play for him. Backs up a step or two now and takes it for the out. One up, one away. Bob Friend does not throw as many knuckleballs in the ball game now as he used to, but Friend has instead developed a screwball, which is a dandy. Here's Gino Simoli. Gino with four base hits in this young year. He has a home run and two runs batted in. One out, bases empty, last of the first inning, no score. Pirates and Dodgers in the first of two games. Law comes to Simoli, and the fastball is beaten foul right off Simoli's ankle. Gino trying to shake that one off. 0-1 oh, the count. The Dodgers have really been getting on Captain Pee Wee Reese because of his idleness, the fact that he has the sore back, and he is spending so much time in the whirlpool bath. Here's a knuckleball that's pulled foul outside of third, 0-2. Oh, so yesterday, at the instigation of Rube Walker, who is a very quiet but uh, very clever river, they put a big sign up on the Whirlpool. It said, The Spirit of Louisville, Kentucky. They claim that Reese has more solo hours in the Whirlpool tub than any other man in history. The boys are on the captain. The strike two pitch is a fastball high and tight, and Simoli has to sit down and give it a lot of room. One and two. Vernon Law ready, and the one and two pitch to Gino. Knuckler outside. Two and two. Boy, you can really see Law's knuckleball come up there. It dances all the way. Hank Foyle's doing a nice job of holding him. Two and two. Law ready and delivers to Gino. And the pitch is cut on and fouled off first base. And it'll either catch the roof or the upper deck. Catches the roof and goes out. Count holes, two balls, two strikes. And the Pirates had a mild flurry in the first inning, if you weren't here with us. Clemente opened up with a single. And Skinner got on when Zimmer booted that line drive that exploded right at his feet. However, Thomas and Smith won out, and the Pirates did not score. Fast ball is cut on and missed, and down goes Simoli. So Gino strikes out. Two down, last of the first inning, and Duke Snyder walking up. Snyder is batting 250. He has two home runs and three runs batted in. In the words of Hoyt Wilhelm, and it's applicable now that Vernon Law is pitching, Wilhelm claims that Schneider is the best knuckleball hitter he's ever seen. He gets a fastball, and it's up high, ball one. So we'll see if Law will throw in some knuckles. Two out in the first inning, no score. The Phillies did not score in the first inning against the Giants. Law double pumping on Schneider, and the 1-0 pitch. Cut out and missed the fastball, one and one.
Johnny Andinelli, who was a doubtful starter for the Giants, he hasn't been feeling well ever since he picked up the virus out at Phoenix. But Andinelli is in there starting for New York today. Vernon Law delivers one and one to Snyder. There's the knuckler outside. Ball two. Two and one. On deck, Carl Perillo. Nice crowd on hand, but nothing close to capacity. I advise you that if you'd like to see the ball game, we have a lot of baseball today and still have plenty of seats. Fastball is cut on and bounced down to Mazeroski. Up with it easily, goes to Skinner, and that's it for Brooklyn in the first inning. Dodge is going quietly. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of one inning, the Pirates nothing, the Dodgers nothing. And just like that, let's hear from Jerry. Well, here are you baseball experts. We've got another Lucky Strike baseball quiz for you. But first, a moment to relax and light up a better-tasting Lucky Strike. Yes, sir. Lucky Strike is a genuine cigarette. All fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Have you tried a Lucky lately? You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Okay, now here's our Lucky Strike baseball quiz. You got your thinking caps on? Well, here's the question. What is the modern Major League record for the most consecutive home runs by a player in a game? Most consecutive home runs by a player in a game. Uh, Taking real hard. Well, if you haven't got it now, you're going to have to give up. In 1932, Lou Gehrig of the Yankees hit four consecutive home runs for the modern Major League record. 1932, Luke Gehrig of the Yanks hit four consecutive home runs for the modern Major League record. And that's our Lucky Strike Baseball quiz for today. And now for more action, here's Vince. Second inning, no score. Dick Grode, Hank Foyles, and Bill Mazeroski coming up for Pittsburgh. Should anybody get on, maybe we'll see Vernon Law. Luke getting his signs from Campanella. Don ready now and works the plate with the fastball and gets it over for a strike. Now, I don't know if Gladys Gooding was being subtle or if it just happened to be the first selection that she decided to play. You know what she played here in the, before the start of the second inning of a doubleheader? It's a lovely way to spend an evening. The strike one pitch to Grote is unintentionally fouled away. He tried to check his swing. 0-2. So if we have a big day of baseball, all right, make sure you have plenty of luckies in a comfortable chair and stay right with us. Nick Grode is batting 182. He has one run batted in. Small right-hand batter. New comes back to him, and the fastball a little high. Ball one. One and two. Kenny Burkhart calling balls and strikes. Dusty Bajas, the senior umpire of the quartet, is at first. Tommy Gorman at second, then Hal Dixon at third. Newcomb works easily, the one and two pitch. Cut on, there's a belt in the right center. That might be trouble. Snyder on the run. It's going to be over his head and bouncing up against the wall. Dick Grote is on his way for two and makes it standing. So Dick Grote lines a double in the right center off the concave wall, and by the time Snyder gets the carom back in, Grote is standing at second. That is hit number two for the Bucks against Don Newcomb. Uh, brings up Hank Foyles, the catcher. Foyles, spelling his name F-O-I-L-E-S. Hank Foyles. The Dodger bullpen begins to stir right away. Pronto, too, for it's Rene Valdez beginning to loosen up. Big Newt comes set. Takes a peek back at Dick Grote at second. Now it comes to the plate, and the fastball is cut on late for a strike. Oh, and one. Rene Valdez, tall, lean Cuban in the bullpen, wearing a number that was really in prominence a couple of years ago. Number 49, worn with such a great deal of distinction by Joe Black. Oh, and one to Hank Foyles. On deck, Bill Mazeroski. Newcomb turns on the rubber, looks back at Grote. Now the strike one pitch to Foyles. They bunt and a good one to the left of the mound. Jackson charging. Bare hand pick up. The throw is just in time. A fine play by Randy Jackson. And on the sacrifice, Dick Grote goes to third. Play going 5-3. One out here in the 
second inning. Bill Mazeroski coming up, and the Dodger infield will crowd him now as they move in. The second baseman is batting 143. And with Groat at third and Mazeroski up there, the Dodgers must also defend against the possibility of a squeeze. Luke taking his full windup. The big right-hander sends up high with his fastball. Ball one. Rene Valdez with that sidearm and sometimes almost submarine delivery getting ready in the bullpen. No score, second inning, one out. Dick Grow to third. Newcomb back again with the 1-0 pitch and the fastball is just outside. Ball two. Campanella doing a little umpiring on his own. 2-0 to count. Breeze has picked up considerably now, blowing out towards right field. That's usually a good breeze for us. Coming from the west. Two and all the count. Newcomb ready, and two holes to plate, and the fastball is fouled back. Two and one. Kenny Burkhart chasing it with his mask, trying to trap a butterfly, and he couldn't do it. Two balls, one strike. Lucky Strike sending it all to you on this Easter Sunday. Campanello wigwagging signs out to his big roommate. Newcomb has the one that he wants, and the 2 1 pitch to Mazeroski. Cut on and tapped in front of the plate. Campanella goes to first base for the out, and Dick Grote has to hang at third. So Mazeroski hits the ball about three feet directly in front of the plate. Campanella throwing him out at first. Two down, Dick Grode at third base, and Vernon Law coming up. Vernon Law is a good athlete. He's a fine pitcher, a good fielder, and a good hitter. The Dodgers have seen him many times. Well, you can bet that Newcomb will be watching him carefully. Clyde Sukhoi of hollering from the pirate dugout wants to say something to manager Bobby Bragan. So Bragan leaves the third base coaching box and comes over to the pirate den to find out what his first lieutenant wants. Sook for the right now is talking to Bragan. Dick Grote at third. Two out in the second inning, no score. And now Bragan is coming up to talk to Vernon Law. Sukeforth saw something and suddenly pulled it off the bench, hollered out to Bragan, passed the information, whatever it might be, to his manager, who then in turn is now talking to pitcher and now batter Vernon Law. And Bragan now wants to talk to plate umpire Kenny Burkhardt. So many things can come up on a ball field, it's, it's unreasonable even to try and guess in something like this. Law is walking away from home plate. Now let's see. The pirate trainer is coming over to say something to Vernon, and it could be that Law isn't feeling too well. And we're going to have a pinch hitter. Johnny Powers gets up and starts walking down to the bat rack. And in the pirate bullpen, they get a right hand to throwing right away. It looks like Clarence Nottingham Churn. That would be a guess. We saw Churn the other day. But something's a matter, I guess, with Vernon Law. It might be that he tried to keep it from anybody. Maybe he didn't feel too well, but Sukeforth spotted it. Said something to Bragan, who spoke to Law, then the trainer came over, and Law walked away. You know they're not just yanking Law for a pinch hitter here in the second. Well, we got the spring off right. Our guess was wrong. It's not Sharon in the bullpen. It's Bob Perky. Bob Perky. Law remains on the pirate bench, and the pirate trainer is standing in front of him, not talking to him. But here comes Johnny Powers. We get a sign from Tex Rickard that Law has a pain in his side. That's a tough break for the young pitcher. So Johnny Powers is hitting for Vernon Law, and Law comes out. As a guess from the sign we received, he has a pain in his side. Newcomb delivers to Powers, who it's a hot one right on by Hodges and down into the bullpen. Grote scores. Powers on his way for second. Prillo trying to chase it in the pen. Still having trouble coming up with it. And Powers is going to third, but a fan might very well have touched the ball, and they'll send him back to second. And that's what happened. So Powers hit the ball into the Dodger bullpen, and a fan reaching over the railing touched it. So Powers will get a ground rule double. So 
Fowler doubles into the pen. That scores Grode, and the Pirates lead one to nothing. So Bobby Bragan rang the right bell that time to send up Johnny Powers, who hit Newcomb's first pitch for a double, and the run is over. Bob Perky continues to throw in the Pirate bullpen as Vernon Law gives way to what is our guess, a pain in his side. That for the opposing teams against Brooklyn pitching. It's the first earned run allowed by the Dodgers in 26 innings. All right, Newcomb is pitching to Bob Clemente, and the changeup is just low. Ball one, and Campanella's mad. He's walking that one off. Roy walks the ball out in front of the plate. That head's going back and forth. You know he's jawing. One and all the count to Bob Clemente. Vernon Law is still on the Pirate bench, as far as we can gather. He hasn't left yet. If we get any further report, we'll pass it along to you. one nothing Pittsburgh, second inning, two out. Johnny Powers at second base. Newcomb delivers, and the curve is hit to Zimmer's left. A diving stop by Little Don. His throw to first is not in time. But it prevented a run from coming over. Little Zimmer does a belly whop right down by the bag at second, and only a brilliant stop prevented the run. So Clemente gets an infield single. Powers stops at third base. Hit number four off Don Newcomb. Two out runners at first and third, and here's Bill Burton, who fly to left field in the first inning. Newcomb turns and comes set. Checks his runners. Now delivers to Verdon. The fastball is fouled back. 0-1. Since we have our own hospital in the picture right now, the Veterans Hospital, First Avenue in New York, and since our prime consideration is to pass along as many free luckies as possible to the folks down there, let's pin 5,000 free luckies on that diving stop by Zimmer. Change up to Verdon is hit to Zimmer's right. Down up with it, staggers, and then goes to Gilliam for the fours. A nice play by Zimmer. When Zimmer tried to put on the brakes and going into the hole, it looked for a moment as if he was going to take a header, but he stayed with it and made his play. In the second inning for the Pirates, one run on three hits. They leave two men. They have now left four. There were no Dodger errors. Now, at the end of an inning and a half, Pittsburgh won, Brooklyn nothing. We'll see Mr. Bob Perky in a moment, but we'll hear from Jerry right now. Say, fans, take a guess at the time right here in Brooklyn. See how close you can get. Oh, don't look at your watch now. But if you said it was uh, 227, that's just about right. And if you went a little further and said it was also light up time, then you're thinking the same thing I am. Yes, sir. Time to touch a match to a lucky strike. Time to settle back to the real, deep-down, smoking enjoyment of this truly genuine cigarette. And believe me, a lucky is just that. Genuine because it's all cigarettes, all fine tobacco. Mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. The announcement by Tex Rickard that uh, Vernon Law pulled a muscle on his right side and was compelled to leave the ball game, being made to the crowd here. So Bob Perky comes on, and we have the explanation on why Vernon Law was suddenly taken out of the ball game. Perky turned it up now with uh, catcher Hank Foyles. Standing by is Carl Ferrillo, the Dodger cleanup batter. He'll be followed by Gil Hodges and then by Ransom Jackson. On the infield, Thomas, Grote, Mazeroski, and Skinner. The outfield, Smith, Burton, and Clemente. And before we go to play, let's pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodger Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO Albany for the Brooklyn Dodgers games. Then right to WOKO for the complete Dodger schedule of games at home and away. They're yours free for the asking, so be sure to give your name and address right baseball, WOKO, Albany, New York. It's 2.30 WOKO time. Nothing Pittsburgh. The tall right-hander sends his first pitch in that's cut on and missed for a strike. Perky worked two innings the other day against Brooklyn, gave up one run and five hits. The run came on Gil Hodges' home run. Perky, a tall right hander, checking his signs. Back comes a strike one, and it's low and outside. One ball, one strike. 
So Vernon Law has a tough break, pulling a muscle in his right side, doing that, no doubt, while pitching to the Dodger hitters in the first inning. He retired them in order and struck out one man. The 1-1 pitch to Perillo. Just outside, ball two. Two and one. Perillo will be followed by Hodges and then Jackson. Should anybody get on, maybe we'll see Campanella. Lucky Strike sending it all to you from Brooklyn. Pirates leading one to nothing in the first of two games. Perky delivers two and one, and Frillo slaps at it and hits it down to Mazeroski, who throws him out at first. Frillo might have been fooled on the pitch. He only took half a swing. Carl goes out for three, one up, one away. Gil Hodges walking up to the plate brings a 333 batting average with him. He's four for twelve. Two home runs, two runs batted in. Phillies and the Giants at the end of two innings, a 1-1 tie. Perky ready and delivers to Hodges and knuckles the first one in there for a strike, going one. The strike one pitch to Hodges, a knuckleball cut on and loop back a second base. Mazeroski going out and calling. Clemente coming on, and it's Clemente for the catch. Oh, the right fielder, Bob Clemente, slanting across, comes in to make the grab, and we have two out. In that Phillies giant ball game, a 1 1 tie at the end of two. Kazanski had a home run in the second inning for the Phillies, and Hank Sauer came back to hit one for the Giants. Well, I imagine Bill Rigney. Like all the managers in both leagues, now knows he's right in the middle of a mess, the 1957 pennant race. He had the first bitter pill yesterday. Jackson takes the first pitch outside. I can't imagine a more miserable way for a manager to bring home a losing ball club than to think about having a tying run at third with nobody out in the ninth inning and not be able to get it over. The 1 0 pitch to Jackson, outside, ball two. However, it'll probably happen to every club before the year is over. Not once, but maybe a couple of times. The most frustrating year I can think of with Brooklyn in the last few about leaving runners at third with less than two outs in an inning was in 1950. Wow. The 2-0 pitch to Jackson, low and outside, ball three. Beard back in 1950 when you remember the Dodgers lost to the Philadelphia Phillies. Almost every ball game that they lost, they'd leave that man at third. Three offenses down the pipe. Three and one. Two out. Last of the second inning. Pirates one. Dodgers nothing. Bob Perky taking over for Vernon Law. Sends a pitch that's cut on as a high fly ball to deep left center. But Vernon is fading with it right near the wall. Turns and takes it. So a long out to deep center. The Dodgers go out in order one, two, three, and the first six men have been retired in a row with the combined efforts of Vernon Law and now Bob Perky. So the end of two, the Pirates a run on four hits, the Dodgers no runs, no hits, and one error. What you got, Jerry? Well, Vinny, there are three fine games coming up this Easter week and three opportunities for the fans, the moms and dads, to satisfy that youngster of yours by taking him to a ball game. Maybe as a reward for that fine report card he brought home recently. Here's the schedule. Tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, the opening day game in Jersey City, Dodgers versus Phillies. Wednesday and Thursday, two night games. And with the New York Giants, no less, here at Ebbets Field. Getaway games are the most exciting of all baseball rivalries. The interborough battles between the Giants and the Dodgers and your first night ball of 1957. Plenty of reserved seats available for all three games. How about a family outing or two at the ballpark? Celebrate Easter week at the ballpark and enjoy baseball. Tomorrow, the opening game in Jersey, the Dodgers and Phillies. Wednesday and Thursday night games against the Dodgers and the Giants. So, lots of fine baseball coming your way. Into the third, Bob Skinner do up, and here we go right back to Vince. Bob Skinner taking the place of Dale Long, who had one of the longest afternoons a ball player can endure yesterday at the hands of Johnny Padres. Long struck out four straight times. And the Dodger ball players, to a man, they were sympathetic to Dale. They understood how those things happened. In fact, Rube Walker was saying, oh, do I understand. I remember catching a doubleheader against the Cardinals, and he had to face Max Lanier and Harry Brackeen in the doubleheader. 
First pitch to Skinner is bunted back foul, 0-1. And, and Rube was saying in nine at-bats, he struck out six times that day. So he said, I know how Dale Long feels. Skinner got on on Don Zimmer's area in the first inning. Bob 0-1. for 1 nothing Pittsburgh here in the third inning. Big Newt comes with a changeup with a little slow curve on the end of it and doesn't get it. One ball, one strike. Pirate run in the second inning. Two doubles and an infield single. Newcomb ready and the 1-1 pitch to Bob Skinner. Fastball, it's jolted to deep left field. Back goes Simoli, way back, right to the wall and takes it. Oh, we've had some long fly balls going for out. One away, and here's Frank Thomas. Thomas flied to Snyder in deep center in the first inning. Frank 0 for 1. Luke ready and sends in the fastball, a half swing, and it's in there for the strike. Going 1. Newcomb has a sign from Cabanella. Don comes back, strike one. The fastball is outside. One and one. Johnny Padres reported that this morning he could hardly get out of bed. That's how stiff and sore he was. That's this morning. He said this afternoon he felt all right. He was saying, boy, I hope I have that real nice stiffness about every fifth day. The boys knew what he meant. The one one is Fastball is cut on. There's a belt high and deep to left field. Forget all about it. That's going to be off the facade. So Frank Thomas jokes one, and the Pirates lead two to nothing. Frank Thomas hits his second home run. That marks the first home run hit against Brooklyn pitching this year. And we send another thousand free luckies to our veterans hospital at First Avenue, New York. Two nothing Pittsburgh here in the third inning. Paul Smith, who grounded out to Hodges, steps in. Bunce and Bunce are fouled to the left of the plate. 0 and 1. On the count. Change up is belted deep to right field. Got a lot of height, a lot of distance, and it just goes out of here. Just inside the foul pole and over the screen. A home run for Paul Smith. And the Pirates now lead 3 0. And Newcomb is getting whacked around. a change-up that just stayed inside the foul pole and just did clear the screen. However, you might just as well hit one 25 miles. It counts the same. And it's 3 nothing the Pirates. So Newcomb has given up six hits, which include two home runs and two doubles. Here's Dick Gold, who doubled in the second inning. Nuke delivers, and the curve is in for the strike. Rene Valdez up again in the Dodger bullpen. Smith is a comparative newcomer. We'll check and see if that's his first major league home run or not. Newcomb back with a fastball. There's another belt to left field. Back goes to Marley. Away back. That one's gone. the baseball on Don Newcomb. Frank Thomas hit a home run. Paul Smith hits a home run. Dick Grote hits a home run. And the Pirates lead 4-0 in the third inning and Walter Austin heading to the mound. The most consecutive home runs hit in one inning by one club in both the National and the American League. Three, which is tied today. However, the small note made by many clubs. 
however, the most home runs in one inning by one club, not necessarily consecutively, the National League, and I happen to see one of those games, the Giants and Cincinnati, five in the fourth inning, and Philadelphia against Cincinnati, five of them in the eighth inning in 1949, the American League, four home runs in one inning, but consecutive home runs in one inning, it's been tied, three straight, and Don Newcomb comes out. thing about the major leagues, if you don't have it, they can really wrap you up in a hurry. Newcomb gives up four runs on seven hits, and of the seven hits, two were doubles and three of them home runs, and out he comes. He is fortunate in a sense, however, that the home runs were consecutively and not with anyone on base. Pirates four, Dodgers nothing here in the third inning, and the Brooklyn folks will now take a peek at Rene Valdez, the tall, lean Cuban. Down in Cuba, Valdez is known as Latigo, L-A-T-I-G-O, which they tell me means whip. He kind of serves sidearm with that right arm, hence the nickname. Rene Valdez taking over for Don Newcomb here in the third inning after three consecutive home runs by Messrs. Thomas Smith and Groth. Dick Groth did not hit a home run all last year, so he got his feet wet early this year. All right, the first pitch is cut on and missed by catcher Hank Foyles, and the crowd in mock applause, letting out a little noise. 0-1. Back comes a strike one pitch, and that's in there, 0 and 2. Valdez with about as thin a pair of legs as there can be in baseball. Sam Jethro had about the same type. It looks like he's going to slide right through his uniform. The 0 and 2 pitch, a curve cut on, a high pop up. Hodges coming down the line from first in fair ground. Waits and takes it. out here in the third inning. Pirates four, Dodgers nothing in the first of two games, and Don Newcomb takes an early shower, working two in the third inning. Bill Mazeroski looks at the first pitch, and it's down low, ball one. In the Dodger bullpen, Sandy Koufax begins to loosen up. Valdez is scheduled to be the third batter when Brooklyn hits in the third. The 1-0 pitch to Mazeroski, fastball cut on, a high fly ball to straightaway center and fairly shallow, about medium. Snyder's there to take it. In the third inning for Pittsburgh, three explosions, three runs on three home runs by Thomas Smith and Gross to tie a record. Nobody left on, and at the end of two and a half innings of play, the Pirates four and Brooklyn nothing. Well, you know, it's not very often that philosophy and baseball go together, but Mr. Gil Hodges has managed to combine the two. All right, Gil. Those bench jockeys, they can sit there all day long making one wise crack after another and really have themselves at ball. Me, I'll just leave it to the other guys and take my fun after the game. That means grabbing a shower and sitting around with a the lucky. They're all cigarettes, all tobacco, all the way through. I'd say Lucky's are the best-tasting cigarette I ever smoked. Yes, sir, Gil. Smokers everywhere find that Lucky's taste better, and for good reason. Lucky's are made of fine, mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. So do as Gil says and light up a Lucky. You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Well, Mr. Bob Perky, who is probably ready to spend a quiet afternoon in the pirate bullpen, was first called on to take over for Vernon Law after one inning when Vernon pulled a muscle in his right side. Perky, since then, has inherited four runs, and the Pirates are leading four to nothing. Perky will pitch to Roy Campanella, Don Zimmer, and Rene Valdez, or a pinch hitter, Sandy Koufax, throwing in the pen. Campanella, batting 273 in this young year. He has a run batted in. Her 
Berkey delivers, and his curve is low and outside. Ball one. The 1 0 pitch to Campy. Trifle high. Ball two. 2 0. A chant begins to swell up from out in left field. We want a hit. And some rhythmical hand clapping, too. 2 0 pitch to Campanellas. Taken for the strike. 2 and 1. The end of this inning will have a complete rundown of all the scores for you. Any home runs that might have been hit and all the pitches involved. 2 1 at a camp. Cut on a big bounce at the short. Groat has to wait for it to come to him. Gets rid of the ball quickly to Skinner in time for the out. One up, one away. Don Zimmer, who booted the ball in the second inning and then came right back to make a brilliant stop stepping in. Don is two for 11. One of his two hits, a home run. That against Robin Roberts. Perky delivers in the sidearm pitch a little high. Ball one. The Dodgers are not tipping a hand. Gilliam, the leadoff man, comes out to the on-deck circle. Colfax continues to throw in the bullpen. The 1-0 pitch, fastball, hit off the thumbs and fouled away. Off first base, back into the crowd. One and one. Lucky Strike sending you all the excitement from Ebbets Field, and we should have plenty of it today. The Dodgers and Pirates and an Easter Sunday doubleheader. The one one of the Zimmer. He tries to bunt a knuckleball, and I think he foul-tipped it. One and two. Zimmer waiting. Perky looking in to get his time from his catcher, Hank Foyles. Now the one and two pitch. In there, call strike three. So Zimmer caught looking and walks away. The first eight Dodgers have been retired in a row, and with no one on base, Valdez will come up to bat for himself. Not knowing very much about Valdez as a batter, but if you remember at all about the Yankee series, he appeared over at the stadium in an exhibition ball game and singled the right. Whether he's a good hitter or not, only time will tell. Perky delivers outside, ball one, one and all. Pirates four, Dodgers nothing, two down, bases empty in the third inning. Perky comes back to the plate, and the pitch is at the knees for a strike, one and one. Valdez just turns and stares at Burkhardt, then shook his head a couple of times, and now gets back in. The one one to Rene Valdez, a knuckleball that goes back to the backstop, ball two, two and one. One pitch to Valdez. Chases him out of there, high and inside, and jumps away from Hank Foyle. Ball three. And maybe it nicked him. Yes, it did on the sleeve, I guess. Valdez is walking to first. And now Kenny Burkhardt says no. And Valdez continues to point to his arm, but he comes back to hit again. Valdez just dropped his bat and began to walk towards first, as if the pitch had hit him on the left sleeve. Burkhardt says no, sir. Count three and one. Valdez again backs out. Now we're ready. 3-1 pitch to Rene. In there, and Valdez was starting to go towards first and comes back again. Oh, Rene's a busy man down there trying to do a little uh, Cuban con job on plate umpire Kenny Burkhardt. Three and two. Well, he's a dandy, this fella. Berkey ready in the 3-2 pitch. Low, and he's finally on. Go ahead, Rene. Pop to first. Valdez at first with two outs. You know, down in spring training, the writers and interviewing him were saying, why in the world do you speak Spanish? You can speak English. Why don't you talk English all the time? You know what his answer was? He said, American ball players play ball in Cuba in wintertime. They no speak Spanish. Me play ball in America in the summertime. Me no speak English. What are you going to do? Okay. Here's Gilliam, who fried to right in the first inning. Jim over for one. Two out, bottom of the third, 4 nothing Pittsburgh. 
Berkey comes to the plate, and Gilliam takes it just high, ball one. Kenny Burkhardt started to raise his right arm and then quickly slapped it back down. The 1 0 pitch to Junior. Sliding outside, ball two. So Dick Grote, with a slight storm signal up, comes starting in from short. Hang Foyle's walking the ball back out to the mound, so he'll have a brief consultation. Two and all, the count to Gilliam. Valdez at first with two out in the third inning. Pirates four, Brooklyn nothing. The end of the inning will give you all the other scores. is broken up. Hang foils back to the plate. Dick Grode goes to short and Bob Perky back to his pitching. Two and all the count to Jim Gilliam. Perky looks over at Valdez. Now the 2 nothing pitch is taken for the strike. Two and one. Pirates chase Newcomb. Three consecutive home runs in the third inning to tie a record held by many clubs in both leagues. A 2-1 pitch to Gilliam. Line outside. Ball three. Three and one. The Pirates get a little restless and they go to the phone, to the bullpen. So we'll probably have some stirring down there. Perky ready. The 3-1 pitch to Junior. In there. Strike two. Sam Marin, the bullpen catcher, is up. And Elroy Face. I think gets out of that pen. I've been wrong once today. Full count to Gilliam. Two out. Valdez inching off the bag. Valdez goes. A 3 2 is cut away foul. One wrong, one right. Batting 500. Face is loosening up with Sam Naren. One nothing Pittsburgh here in the third. Mazeroski out on the grass for Gilliam. Perky checks. Valdez goes. The three two is hit slowly by the mound down to Grote at short, who hurries his play to first in time. So Gilliam goes out short to first. And the Dodgers go out in the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. And so, at the end of three innings of play, the score, the Pirates four, and the Dodgers nothing. Now we'll check our Lucky Strike scoreboard. The Phillies and Giants, Roberts and Antonelli, at the end of two and a half innings, and now make it three complete. A 1-1 tie on home runs by Kazansky and Sauer. That's the first of two. Cincinnati and Milwaukee, clip sign against Spawn. No score at the end of one inning. Chicago and St. Louis in a doubleheader that's been delayed because of rain, but we have confirmation on the pitchers. Kaiser against Wehmeyer. The Yankees and the Red Sox in a single game. Sturt event against Sisler. No score at the end of two and a half innings. Baltimore leading Washington five to four at the end of four and a half innings. Beeman and Ferries for Baltimore. Shackles, Clevenger, and Byerly for Washington. Roy Sievers hit his third home run in the second inning with nobody on for Washington. That's the first of two. Cleveland and Detroit at the end of four innings. Cleveland two and Detroit nothing. Garcia against Gromack with Hefter leaving in the third inning. By the way, Billy was rejected by the draft board again. Kansas City and Chicago. Morgan against Wilson. No score at the end of one inning. Well, you're right up to date on all the scores. We roll along into the fourth inning of this first game of a doubleheader. The Dodgers and the Pirates. Pittsburgh leading Brooklyn four to nothing. Lucky Strike sending it all to you. And sending you now for the play-by-play, Jerry Doggett. Thanks, Bill. Hi, everyone. It'll be Bob Perky, the pitcher due up there, to be followed by Roberto Clemente and then by Bill Burton. Four nothing ball game. Pittsburgh one in the second and three in the third. And the home runs teed off by Thomas Smith and Goats, the first this year off Dodger pitching. Valdez looks in for a sign. The windup and side arms a fastball in for strike one swinging on Bob Perky. Perky wearing a number 34 in the back of his gray uniform. Big doubleheader today between the Dodgers and the Pirates from Everett Field. Tomorrow will be at Jersey City. Side arm fastball is in for a call strike two on Perky. Nothing in two. 
Pirates batting fourth inning. Valdez into the windup. Curveball breaks outside low, and it's ball one. One ball, two strikes. In case you joined us late, the Pirates got one in the second, three in the third. Vernon Law started and went out in the second inning with a pulled muscle. There's a foul ball punched off to the right down in the stands. And the fan tries to one-headed but can't hold on. So the count stays one and two to pitcher Bob Perkey. Valdez winds. Fastball is in for a call strike three. Right arm fastball pumped in and over. And out on strikes, Bob Perkey. For Valdez, strikeout number one. And on coming now will be Roberto Clemente, who has an infield single behind second base and a single to right field. So Clemente two for two today. Right hand batter. Clemente hitting 500 as he stands at the plate. Three hits, six tries. They had one for four before today. Start on fastball, swung on a fly ball, hitting the right center field. Polo drifts over, and he's there to make the catch for the out. Clemente. Two for in right field. Two up and two down, and here's Bill Verdon. On on the fourth out and slide out to left field. Verdon hitting 231. Has three hits, 13 trips to the plate. Left hand batter with two away in the fourth inning. Tall, slender right hander. Dene Valdez into the windup. Delivers. Overarm this time, high on outside. Ball one. No strikes. Left hand batter, Bill Verdon in the batter's box. Here's a foul ball that up in the stands, and it's strike one, ball one. Valdez coming overhand now to the left hand batters. He was slingshotting them in sidearm to the right hand batters. Sidearm pitcher has to be careful going to a left hand batter, though. Ball hangs out over that plate sometimes. 1 1 pitch. Press ball, chopped down foul. Rolling off to the Brooklyn dugout. And it's a ball and two strikes. Jackson, Zimmer, Gilliam and Hodges on the infield. Simone, Snyder, and Furlow on the outfield. Valdez taking a sign. One, two offing. The wind up in the six. A bouncer to the right side. Gilliam comes in. Gets a short hop. Play the first is in time. And that's all. Burden out. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. The end of three and a half innings of play. The score, the Pittsburgh Pirates four, and the Brooklyn Dodgers have none. Now here's a word from Vince. Well, right at this moment, friends, do you have any idea how many smokers across the country are lighting up luckies? How many folks are settling back to real deep-down smoking enjoyment? Well, I'd say countless thousands. Yes, sir, they know that Lucky Strike is all cigarette, all fine tobacco. Mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Have you tried a Lucky lately? You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Light up a Lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go Lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up. A lucky strike. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. All right, to the last of the fourth inning. Four nothing Pittsburgh. Bob Perky about ready, so let's get right back to Jerry. The Dodgers looking for the first base hit of the afternoon. Have had one base runner. Well, there's drew a walk in the third inning with two out. Simone will be the first batter. Went down swinging first time up. Gino hitting 286. Four hits, 14 trips to the plate. One homer and two runs batted in. So Bob Perky now on the hill. Looking in for a sign from catcher Hank Foyles. And we're set to play. Bottom of the fourth inning. Pitch to Gino. Is in and over for strike one. The Pirates have Thomas at third, Grote at short, Mazeroski at second, and Skinner at first. Smith, Verdon, and Clemente in the outfield. Foyles catching, and Bob Perky doing the pitching. And Lucky Strike sending you all the action from Ebbets Field. Big Easter Sunday doubleheader today. The 1-1 pitch. Curveball is inside, and the count to Gino goes 2-1. and one.
2-1 luck now. The wind up and pitch. Curveball chopped off foul behind the plate. The count evens at 2-2. Two two. Yes, sir, the Dodgers and the Pirates going at it here. And lots of seats on hand, so why don't you make plans to come out? You can see a lot of this one, and, uh, well, the whole second game for sure. So kind of make tracks right there for Ebbets Field. Still plenty of good seats available to see the ball game this afternoon. 2-2 two, two pitch. So on a bounder hit the third. Big hop to Thomas. The long throw across is high, but Skinner went high in the air and hauled it down for the out. So we have one away on Duke Strander coming on, and before Duke uh, steps in, let's pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodger Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO Albany. 3 o'clock WOKO time. Rose Oldsmobile always scores high. Yes, 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. Folks who buy from Rose year after year. There must be a reason. That's right. The reason is Rose Oldsmobile maintains in the modern service shop all the latest scientific equipment to give continuing warranty work on every old they sell. Service that continues on and on long after the sale is made. Rose Oldsmobile utilizes latest up-to-the-minute factory methods in offering this warranty service. Their mechanical experts are trained in their skills by regular attendance at Olds factory schools. That's why Rose Oldsmobile scores high in repeat old sales. Rose makes certain that the Oldsmobile you buy from them is kept in perfect running condition. That's why 67% of Rose Oldsmobile customers return. Rose offers more low price plus the continuing service that means satisfaction to you. See Rose Oldsmobile, Capital District's oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer, Central and Manning. Skinner deep along the first base side. 3 1 pitch. Duke swings and chops a foul down the first base line. Kemp fills out at 3 and 2. First, he came on to work in the second after Law went out with a pulled muscle in his side. Duke and down he goes. So there are two outs now. Snyder strikes out. And for Bob Perky, that is strikeout number two. Carl Fuller coming on. Thus far in the game, we have reached 8,000 of our 22,000 quarter of luckies for the VA Hospital, First Avenue, New York City. So we'll keep them coming. Send them your way. Lucky strike, sending you play by play. Hope you've got plenty of luckies on hand for a long afternoon of baseball. Gorilla waits as Perky delivers. Swung on a high fly ball, popped into short right field. Out for it goes Mazeroski. In comes Clemente. Clemente calls, makes the grab for the outside retired. Gorilla on a pop fly into short right. So again, the Dodgers go one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on base. So at the end of four innings of play, the score the Pirates four, the Dodgers nothing. First half of this game has been brought to you by Lucky Strike, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. It's made by the American Tobacco Company. Tobacco is our middle name. And now to take over, the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of Schaefer Beer, America's oldest lager beer. It's real beer. Say a word of advice to mom and dad. Don't wait until it's too late to enroll your boy in the Dodger Town Summer Camp for Boys. Two months, July and August, of solid sports activity at Dodger Town, Vero Beach, Florida. Expert coaching in baseball, football, tennis, swimming, basketball, fishing, canoeing, and many other sports. Fine living quarters, the best in health giving food. Drop us a line and let us send you a brochure telling you all about Dodger Town, the finest summer camp in the land. Top half of the fifth inning will have Bob Skinner on now to face Rene Valdez. Four to nothing, Pirates lead the first game. Skinner on and on there and flat out to left field. Left hand hitter. Overarm fastball in off the shoulder and it's ball one. This is the first game of the season for Skinner, who now is 0 for 2. Thomas on deck and then uh, Smith to follow. Overarm fastball high and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes on Bob Skinner. Getting third in the batting order. Two nothing count. Valdez checks the sign. Delivers. Swing and a foul. Head back into the screen and it's two and one. 
In case you're wondering why manager Bobby Bregan uh, has his pitcher hitting in the number nine spot today, well, it may be that Bobby is going to abandon the uh, pitcher hitting eight for psychological reasons. Two one pitch. Third ball breaks in close, and it's ball three. Three and one. Some of the opposition have been riding that number nine hitter a little bit and asking them how come they're hitting behind the pitcher and it's uh, kind of wearing on the nerves of that guy in the number nine spot. So, here's the pitch inside, ball four, and uh, Skinner is on with the walk. So Bob Skinner draws a base on balls, the first off foul there. And it brings on Frank Thomas as a home run in the fly-out. One for two. Valdez out of a stretch now. Sidearm curveball, a swung on and miss. Strike one. Thomas hitting 231. Well, anyway, back to that eight and nine man. Mazeroski was in a slump, and it may be that uh, the needling was getting on him. So manager Bobby Bregan switched him around and may leave the pitch in the number nine spot for a while. There's a bunt try off the third baseline. Jackson coming fast for it. One hands it, and the play is uh, dropped by Hodges, and all hands are safe. The throw to Hodges just popped out of his glove, and we'll see how they score it. Jackson coming down the line to grab the bunt there, and, and with a swinging throw all in one motion, and an error is called on the play, and we'll see who gets it. Error on Hodges as the ball popped out of Gill's glove. So that's the second miscue of the game for the Dodgers. Error on Hodges. And on the play, Skinner goes into second. And no time at bat charge for Thomas. A sacrifice and an error on the play. It is running with a sacrifice. And now, ball Smith up. Infield looking for the bunny. He pulls the bat out of there, and it's ball one. Valdez ready. Hodges sneaking down the line. The pitcher's front is popped foul off to the left and out of play. One and one. One ball, one strike. Smith had a home run his last time up, grounded out his first time. Skinner drew a walk. And on a bunt, Thomas safe at first when Hodges dropped Jackson's throw. For scoring, do not give Thomas the time at bat. He was running for the sacrifice and drew life on the error. 1-1. One, one. Valdez with a stretch to pitch. Smith bunts it up the first baseline. Hodges has only one play. Back to first base to Gilliam covering there. And the runners move over. Skinner takes third. Thomas goes to second base. And out at first on the sacrifice is Paul Smith. Hodges to Gilliam, 3-4. So, one out, two on, and the batter will be Dick Grote, who has a double and a home run, has scored two runs. Infield will play it in tight now. Zimmerbank just a couple steps shortstop. The rest of the infield all up close. Valdez trying to get out of trouble. The wind-up and down it comes. Fast ball is low for ball one. Dick Grote, the shortstop, hitting 308 with four for 13. There's a foul ball coming right back upstairs, and it's one and one. One ball, one strike to Dick Grote. Hank Foyle's on deck. The Pirates lead four to nothing, and they're batting in the fifth inning, and they have a threat going now. At third base, Skinner at second base, Thomas. The one-one offering. Shot arm blow, and it's ball two. Turned one. Rene Valdez yielding a leadoff walk to Skinner. Thomas got on on an error, moved up on a sacrifice. Runners at second and third, 2 1 count. The wind up and pitch. Curveball high, and it's ball three. Three and one now. Campy walks out in front of the plate, says something to Valdez, and lobs the ball back to him. count. Curveball for strike two. 
And the Kenneth Fold of Dick Gross, three and two. Dodger infield playing in sight, trying to hold the runners up. Valdez ready, the three two pitch on the way. Curveball, pop foul on the first base line, and it'll go down the stand. Rose just reached out for a breaking ball that time, lost his bat, and popped the ball foul in the stands. John Newcomb drew the start for the Dodgers today and was tied for three consecutive home runs in the third. Here's the pitch. Ground ball foul, pass first, all the way down the line to the Dodger bullpen. Pirates got a run in the second, three more in the third, and lead four to nothing. Have runners in second and third, one out here in the fifth inning. 3 2. Growth waiting. Valdez delivers. Curveball chopped on the uh, third baseline. Valdez played to the plate. Is in time. Great play. Valdez came to the foul line and picked her up and threw home in time for a good tag by Campanello to get him out of the plate. Valdez fell to one knee when he fielded the ball and then lobbed into Campanella a distance of about 20 feet. And got the base runner, Skinner, trying to come into the plate. On the plate, Thomas goes into third. And in the first safe is Dick Groat. So there are two outs, runners at first and third. As Valdez came to the third baseline, fell to one knee, picked up a soft tap off the bat of Groat. Got the toss into Campanella, who put the tag on cleanly in time to get the runner, Skinner, out of home. So there are two outs. And the batter, Hank Foyles, the catcher. Time now. Valdez and uh, Campanella having a talk. The umpire's coming in. Conference at the mound. The umpire's manager Walt Austin to see about it also. Time was out. The ball uh, tossed away by Valdez. And don't buy Dusty Vargas coming over to talk to him about it. He wanted that ball rubbed up, I guess, and they uh, let him know that uh, you got to rub it yourself. He tossed it over to Jackson and uh, went on by. Time was out, of course. So Valdez is instructed on the fine art of rubbing up the baseball himself. And now he gets set to pitch. He tosses it to Jackson and uh, the ball is out on by Randy, out of play. Valdez ready. Here's the pitch. Side armed in high, it's ball one. Foils held up on his swing, ball one count. Again, ready, checks the runners. Side arms the pitch, a swing and a high fly ball. Straight away right field, Perillo in two steps, pounds the glove, waits, and he has it, and the side is retired. Oil skies out high to Perillo in right field. So it's no run. No base hit. One error, and two left on for Pittsburgh in the top half of the fifth inning. So at the end of four and a half innings to play, the score, the Pirates four, the Dodgers nothing. Well, I want to find out what you're going to do this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. What's the plan this afternoon? Going to listen to the game a while and then get out and do some riding around? Maybe keep the game on over the car radio? But say, if you're going out, how's the supply of Schaefer? You got plenty on ice? You got some more in the cupboard? Well, when that beer on ice disappears? Well, you better make sure there's plenty and then maybe get an extra six-pack or two anyway. Because... One thing's a sure sunrise. If there's Schaefer beer in your house, it's bound to disappear at a regular rate. Sure, once a guy discovers the wonderful flavor of Schaefer, the way his taste buds perk up at the taste of it, and the way his eyes tell him that he's in for real enjoyment just at the sight of it, well, that's all. Mm Mm-hmm. Like I said, it disappears. So you'd better get some Schaefer today. It's real beer.
We'll move along now to the last half of inning number five. Hodges will be coming up to the plate for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And Jackson, then Campanella. Right now, stepping right back up to the mic. Here's Jerry. Well, Bob Perky and Vernon Law have combined a no-hitter so far at the Dodgers through four turns at bat. Hodges steps in. He flies the right. First time up. So we're set to go here in the last half of the fifth. Pirates lead 4 nothing, and the Dodgers trying to get something started in this first game. Curveball is in for a strike as Hodges tried to check his swing, but it was in over anyway. Yes, sir, a fine Easter afternoon, and how about you? You want to come on out here and see a good ball game? We're going to have another one left here after this one. See quite a bit of this one in the middle, an entire second game. A let-up pitch is over for a strike two to Gill. Sandy Koufax is up and throwing in the Dodger bullpen down in right field. Here's the pitch. Curveball high inside, and it's one and two. Two pitch. Swollen and grounded right back to the middle, and there's the first base into the ball game for Brooklyn. As Jill Hodges wrapped the bounder right back past Perky, all over second in the center field for a ground single to center. And it brings on Randy Jackson, who fly to center deep his first time up. So Jackson comes on. Hodges aboard. Bob Perky. <laughs> Texas runner now at first base. Delivers to Randy. Curveball for strike one. The Phillies and Giants won one at the end of five in their ball game. Cincinnati leads Milwaukee one to nothing at the end of two. Cubs lead uh, the Cardinals two to nothing at the end of a half inning. A swing and a miss. Strike two for Jackson. Nothing and two on Randy Jackson. The Yankees lead Boston one to nothing through four and a half. Baltimore six to four over Washington through five and a half. Kenny Burkhart now supplying a new baseball to Bob Perky. Cleveland leads Detroit two to nothing through five and a half, and Chicago, Kansas City, no score at the end of three and a half. Quick rundown on our Schaefer scoreboard for you. Curveball way outside, ball one, one and two. Sandy Koufax in the bullpen in case the Dodgers get something going. May see a pinch hitter for Valdez. We'll get that far in the order. Jackson waits, Hodges off first. Perky delivers. Swing a bounding ball out towards second. Mazeroski in the short. One back to first. Double play. Play going Mazeroski to cook the skinner and uh, two out. Four, six, three if you're scoring with us. And that's the first twin killing of the game. Shots up on the pirate side of the book. Two down and here's Campanella. Rounded out the short first time up. The Dodgers have had just one extra hitter so far in the game. Valdez walked in the third and was left standing. He walked with two outs. Pirates are stranded six. Ball one count to Campy. Perky deals. Campanella swings and hits one foul right back above us. And it's one and one. One ball, one strike. Here's a swing and a foul ball shot back, and it's still one and two. Swing and a foul again back. That time Perky came without a windup. Trying to catch Campy off guard. One ball, two strikes. Bottom of the fifth inning. He comes again without a windup, and it's a little high for ball two. Two and two. Berkey looks for a sign. Now comes up to the top. There's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Well tight. Back towards Joe Thurden. Back at the base of the wall. Makes the grab for the out. 
Campanella hitting one straight away and deep to center, and Burton raced back to grab her down for the out to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and none left on. And so that's the end of five innings of play with the score. The Pittsburgh Pirates four, the Brooklyn Dodgers have none. Under he's whistling, he's happy because he bought his 1957 Olds from Rose Olds the oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer in the Capital District. Why, I wouldn't even consider buying my Olds from any dealer but Rose Oldsmobile. There must be a reason. There is, because Rose maintains the proper facilities for warranty work that ensures your satisfaction. Service that continues long after the sale is made. Rose Oldsmobile's modern shop contains all the latest factory-approved equipment for keeping your Olds in tip-top condition. Their careful servicemen are constantly being trained in Olds factory school. That's the reason. That's why over 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. Folks who come back year after year because Rose offers more. Low price plus continuing interest in your satisfaction. There is no substitute for integrity. And integrity means Rose Oldsmobile, Central and Banning. Satisfying customers at the same location for more than 30 years. That's Rose Oldsmobile. Time to get started here in the sixth inning with Mazeroski coming up for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Then we'll have Bob Perky and a lot more fireworks. But Jerry, if you're all set, you got it. Four to nothing, the Pirates out in front. Four runs, seven hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit and two errors. First game of a twin bell this Easter Sunday afternoon and a lot more baseball coming your way. And if you want to spend the rest of the afternoon, well, come on out to Everett's Field. Got plenty of good seats available yet. Good selection. Here's Valdez pitching to Mazeroski. Swinging a high pop fly on the right side. Hodges and Gilliam. Now Hodges calls for it after looking at Gilliam. And Gilliam comes in behind Gill and makes the catch. So a uh, moment of indecision there. But finally, Gilliam made the play. So it's one up, one down. And here's the pitcher, Bob Perky, coming on. He was called out on strikes first time. Perky has yielded just one hit after taking over from Vernon Law in the first inning. Law started and got the side out in order and then went out with a pulled muscle in his right side. Here's the pitch. Swung on a top foul back upstairs and it's strike one on Perky. Roberta Clemente is on deck and Bill Verdon to follow. One out, sixth inning, Pirates four, Dodgers nothing. Here's a swing and a foul tip in the glove for strike two. 0 oh 2 on Bob Perky. Valdez. Checks in for a sign, winds and fires. Curveball comes down and low, and it's one and two. Curveball outside, ball two, and it's two two now. Valdez checks his sign. And the 2-2 on the way. Fastball, low again, and it's ball free. Three and two on Bob Perky. On deck is Roberto Clemente. Valdez checks the sign again, winds and fires. There's a bouncing ball to the left side. Zimmer comes in for the short hop. Play across is in time for the out, and it's two gone. Perky grounding out short to first. Hey, fans, we're happy to announce that once again the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn will be awarding the outstanding Dodger players each week with a Schaefer Award. The sports writers covering the Dodgers select the outstanding Dodger pitcher and hitter for the Schaefer Award. These players have their choice of many fine gifts, including a U.S. savings bond. And the first Schaefer Awards of 1957 go to Sal Magley and Gil Hodges. So congratulations to Sal and Gil for winning the Schaefer Awards this first week. Roberto Clemente has two for three today. Sidearm, fastball, a swing, a fly ball, drill deep to center. Strider turns, goes back, 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 and ties her down deep in the corner in center field. Way back. Clemente gave it a big ride, and Strider went on by the 376-foot sign back in the corner and made the catch deep in center. So that's all for the Pirates in the sixth inning. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So at the end of five and a half, the score, the Pirates four, and the Dodgers have nothing. Well, Al, uh, what'd you say? 
Well, if I were to stop you in the street, Jerry, yeah, and ask you, just tell me the one thing they brew beer for, what would you think the right answer would be? Oh, I don't know. For the look of the beer, maybe? Well, for the look of the beer or for the gold of afternoon sunlight, the snowy whiteness of our bellow of bone, or for the taste or the rich, mellow flavor, the zesty, appetizing flavor you don't always find. Well, if you put all those things in, you'd be absolutely right. But more than those things, what they brew beer for most of all is enjoyment. Your enjoyment. The kind of enjoyment that makes you smack your lips and say, Ah, bring on another. Brother, that is the story of Schaefer beer. It's brewed for enjoyment, for perfect looks, for tops and flavor, for your enjoyment through and through. You try Schaefer today and you'll see. You'll see it's real beer. You sure found it out, didn't we, Jerry? You said it, Al, boy. It is real beer, Schaefer beer. Well, we move along to the last half of the sixth inning. It'll be Zimmer and possibly a pinch batter for Valdez as Sandy Amaros is out in the on-deck circle now. And then uh, Jim Gilliam. Zimmer swings and fouls her off upstairs, and it's strike one. Zim was called out on a strike the first time. The Dodgers have just one hit. Hodges led the fifth inning with a single to center field. Perky delivers a curveball that's in for strike two. inside with the curve and it's one ball two strikes Valdez worked three and two third innings and allowed no runs and no hits and uh, will very likely be lifted here in a moment fastball up high it's ball two two and two on Don Zimmer Sandy Amaros has the station in the batting circle two two pitch Pulling well, a high fly ball to right center field. Clemente going back for it, calling now as he and Verdon converge. Clemente near the wall, and he's got it for the out. Clemente making a basket-type catch deep in right center field. So Zimmer hit one far and deep to right center. is out. And here is Sandy Amaros coming on now as a pitch batter for Valdez. Amaros making his first appearance in the 1957 season. Pinch hitting in the sixth. On Valdez, three and two thirds inning. No runs, no hits, one strike out and one walk. The wind up and pitch by Perky. High with a fastball, it's ball one. Newcomb started work two and a third, allowed four runs and seven hits, struck out none and walked none. Sandy takes it in and over and it cost him for a strike. One and one. Gilliam is on deck and then Simoli to follow. Berkey checks the sign with catcher Hank Foyles. Wine, curveball is low and it's ball two. Two and one. Last half of the sixth inning. The Pirates four, the Dodgers nothing. First game of a doubleheader. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside around the knees and it's ball three. Three and one. Sandy Koufax in the bullpen for Brooklyn will... No doubt be the next pitcher. Seventh inning. Three one reading. High and outside. That is walk number two given up by Bob Perky. And up now will be Gilliam who has flat out and grounded out, and Gilliam hitting 353 as he steps in. Six base hit, 17 steps to the plate. Left hand batter against right hand pitching. Dodger fans want something to get going here. Trying to get the Brooks back in the ball game. Here's the pitch. Fastball for strike one. Gilliam at bat, Simone to follow. We have one out, one on. Amaros pinch hitting for Valdez, drew a walk. Bob Perky, the big right hander, checks his runner, delivers to Gilliam. On the corner with a fastball for strike two. Frank Thomas, the third, was in close. Now he backs up a step or two. Dick Groth, the shortstop, comes in to smooth out some footprints in the sand. Now backs up. Infield just a slight bit to the right side and halfway for a double play ball. The 0-2 pitch. Swollen and drilled the right field. Clemente waits in his tracks. He's there and makes the grab for the out. 
Gilliam lines one straight away from Eddie in right field. Throw away, and here's Gino Simoli. Struck out and grounded out. Gino hitting 267. Has four for 15. So Simoli coming on with Snyder on deck, and then Frodo to follow. Brings a drive to left center field. Back goes Burden, sliding over, and he's there to make the grab for the out. The Moly hit it well, but Burden was over there to haul it down. So that's all in the six for the Dodgers. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. At the end of six full innings to play, the score in the ball game, the Pirates four and the Dodgers have none. Well, Al standing by to check up on the Schaefer scoreboard and give us a rundown on all the activities. So, Al, how about it? All right, Jerry. Let's see, in the National League, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Giants at the end of six innings of play, it's all tied up at one apiece. Their first game of two. Roberts pitching for Philadelphia with an 0-1 record, going against left-hander Johnny Antonelli, who is also 0-1. Kazanski and Sauer have hit home runs on opposite sides of the fence, both in the second inning. Cincinnati Milwaukee in a single affair at the end of three innings. The Red Legs are leading the Milwaukee Braves, one to nothing. Johnny Klipstein for Cincinnati with an 0 1 record. Warren Spawn, the classy left hander, who has one run and lost none. Bailey hit a home run in the second with nobody on for the Cincinnati Reds, his first of the year. Chicago and St. Louis, their first game of a doubleheader, delayed because of rain. At the end of two innings, Chicago two, and the St. Louis Cardinals have one. Tires are pitching for the Chicago Cubs, and it's Herman Wehmeyer for the St. Louis Cardinals. In the American League, at the end of five and a half innings, the Yankees are leading Boston one to nothing. Sturdivant for the Yankees, Sisler for Boston. Skyron hit a home run in the fourth, with the bases empty, his third home run of the year. Baltimore and Washington at the end of six innings, 7-6, Washington over Baltimore. Boyd and Severs have both hit home runs on opposite sides of the fence. For uh, Baltimore, Beeman, Ferrarese, and Cornelius in the sixth. For Washington, Shackles, Clevenger in the fifth, Byerly in the fifth, Stone in the sixth, and Ramos in the seventh. Cleveland, Detroit at the end of six innings, side up at two apiece. Garcia started for Cleveland, Marcy in the sixth. Gromek started for Detroit, Billy Heft in the third. Marius a home run in the third with one on, his second of the year for Cleveland. At the end of five, correction, four and one half innings, it is... Nothing, nothing between Kansas City and Chicago. Morgan going against Wilson. Well, that's it, Jerry. Right up to the minute. Okay, Al, we have Sandy Koufax on now, the third Brooklyn pitcher. Winds and fires. Fastball comes down and low to Bill Burton, and it's ball one. Burton has flat out, been on on the fourth out, and grounded out. So he's none for three today and hitting 214 as he stands in there. The Pirates lead four to nothing. Sandy Koufax winds and delivers. A bunt drag on the first base side. Koufax over four. Drops the ball and can't make a play. The ball fell out of his glove as Sandy picked it up and turned the throw. And he had an easy play until he dropped the ball out of his hand and grabbed it with a bare hand. Then it was too late. So it is an error scored on Koufax. And Bob Skinner comes on now. And before he steps in, let's pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodger Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers game. And write to WOKO for the complete Dodger schedule of games at home and away. You are free for the asking, so be sure to give your name and address. Write baseball, WOKO Albany, New York. Bob Skinner, the batter, first pitch comes low for ball one. Verdon on with a bunt and an error on Koufax. Sandy grabbed the ball with a gloved hand, and as he started to pick it out of the gloved hand, the ball popped free and he grabbed it with a bare hand, and then he was too late. So, one nothing count now on Skinner. One on in the seventh inning. Pirates batting. Left-hander takes a call strike on an overarm fastball. One and one. Frank Thomas on deck and Paul Smith down in the hole. The Dodgers and the Pirates at Ebbets Field in the first of two today on this fine Easter Sunday afternoon. One ball, one strike. Koufax delivers, and the pitch is fouled off as uh, Skinner tried to hold up on the swing. The ball hit the bat and slashed off into the stands on the left side. One ball, two strikes. One on, none out, seventh inning. Koufax now beginning his third year with the Dodgers, was signed as a bonus player in 1954. And in the 55 season, won two and lost to last year at a 2-4 record. Overarm curveball, bites low, and it's ball two. Even up now, 2-2. Two, two. Koufax, of course, a Brooklyn boy. 
And he had a very fine spring. Sandy looked very good in the spring training. Turn two. There's a foul ball again flashed off to the left, and the count stays 2-2. Tomorrow, the Dodgers play the Phillies at Jersey City. Off Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday nights here by the New York Giants. Night games Wednesday and Thursday. 2-2 look. Here's the pitch. Curveball fouled away upstairs, and the count on Bob Skinner is still 2-2. Schaefer Bear sending you all the action right here at Ebbets Field. Newcomb started with tags for three home runs in the third, and then Valdez took over. Newcomb had yielded a run in the second. Valdez worked three and two thirds innings, and now Kofax comes on here to begin the seventh. Four to nothing, Pirates. There's a long belt to right field. This one is tagged. This one is back back. It is up and over the scoreboard for a home run for Skinner. And the Pirates now increase the lead to six nothing. As Bob Skinner belts one over the Schaefer scoreboard in right field for a home run. So Skinner gets a home run. And the Pirates now have built their lead to 6-0 with Frank Thomas coming on. Fly it out, hit a home run, and was safe on a sacrifice and an error. Not a one for two for Thomas. Kofax winds and delivers. This one hit him on the left side, right above the belt. And Thomas on, hit by a pitch ball. Kofax fastball came inside and hit Thomas right in the side around the belt. Here's Paul Smith up now. He has one for two also, hit a home run in the third. Left-hand batter playing left field for the Pirates. Pittsburgh six and Brooklyn nothing. There's a punt try and it's fouled back into the wire. Strike one. None out, one on, two runs in. Kenny Lehman, a left-hander, and Don Elston, a right-hander, now warm up in the Dodger bullpen down in the right field. Elston and Lehman. Kofax delivers. Curve is in for a strike two. Smith uh, moves up as if to bunt, pulled the bat out of there, and had it called anyway. Nothing and two of the count. Checks first. Comes to the plate with a curveball. Strike three call. The slow curve came in and over, and Smith had a look at it and is out on strike. Strike out number one for Sandy. Up now is Dick Gross. Double, hit a home run, and on on the field is choice. Kofax fastball comes down low and it's ball one. On first is Frank Thomas. In the inning, Verdon bunted and was safe when uh, Kofax dropped the ball. Skinner hit a home run and Thomas was hit by a pitch. Smith called out on strike. There's a foul ball straight back to the wire and the count evens at one and one. Dick Groat, the shortstop, up with Hank Foyles, the catcher, do next. And Mazeroski to follow after that. In the top of the seventh inning, the Pirates six, the Dodgers nothing. Here's a ground ball to the right side, and a great stop by Gilliam. Turn, throws, in time, fine play. Gilliam moves quickly to his left on a ball that appeared to be going through the hole to right field. Jim went over, speared it, and the momentum carried him around. He had to turn completely, and then fired to Hodges in time to get Dick Groat. And on the play, Thomas moves into second. Two away. Fine play by Gilliam. Hank Foyles, the catcher, coming on now. Sacrifice, pop out, and the fly out to right. Two runs in, six nothing, and two outs with a man at second base. Pirates batting in the seventh inning. Kofax delivers. 
curveball is swung on a miss, strike one. on a fastball for strike two to Hank Boyle. Nothing in two counts. Boyle's waiting. Colfax ready. He delivers. Curveball pops foul upstairs and it's still strike two. Two count, Kofax set, delivers curveball that breaks low. Campanella knocks it down, keeps the ball in front of him. One ball, two strikes on Foyles. Two out, Frank Thomas, the runner at second base. Myers six, Dodgers nothing. The Dodgers have had just one base hit today. Kofax ready again, checks and delivers. Swinging a fly ball to right field near the line. Frollo, a long way to go. Slows up now as he jogs in to make the catch for the out and retire the side. Boyle skies to Frollo in right near the line, and that's all. In the seventh, two runs on one base set. One error and one man left on. So that's the end of the top half of the seventh inning. And the score in the ball game, the Pirates have six and the Dodgers have none. Well, here's old Al making like a fortune teller, I bet you. Yeah, that's right, Jerry. I'd just like to ask the folks if they ever wish that they could predict the future. Do you ever wish you could say, for instance, just who's going to stop off to see you and just when over the weekend? Well, of course you can't, but you can be prepared. And you can predict what will happen if folks drop in. Sure, you can be prepared and mighty easily, too, with a case of Schaefer beer. 24 bottles or cans, a really good weekend supply. And with Schaefer on hand, you can predict what'll happen. They'll get real enjoyment out of their visit. That's what they'll get. Real enjoyment's just what you get in every single bottle or can of Schaefer. The real enjoyment of beer that's brewed for a real, howdy neighbor kind of flavor. The kind of flavor that makes and keeps good friends. So better order a case of Schaefer right away. It's real beer. and clapping music by Miss Gladys Gooding. Now after the seventh inning stretch, into the last half of the seventh with Duke Snyder coming up to the plate now for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Snyder, Perillo, and Hodges. You got it, Jerry? Right, Al. The Dodgers with one base hit. Swingled by Hodges in the fifth inning. Now Snyder waits. Grabbed out and struck out in two trips. Perky fires a fastball to south side. Ball one. Perky came to the Pirates late last year with just in, uh, in just two games and worked a total of four innings. Swing and a miss for Duke, and it's one and one. He was at Hollywood the remainder of the year, the first part, and he won six and lost eight, but had a fine earned run average of three three six. Perky looks in for the sign. One one on the way to Duke. Swung on and missed, strike two. Perky's a hundred eighty pounder, stands six two. And he is a native of Pittsburgh. The first came to the Pirates in 1954. One ball, two strikes. Snyder waiting. Down comes the pitch. Outside for ball and the count 2-2. Two -two. In case you joined the plate, Vernon Law was the starter for Pittsburgh and he was uh, taken out in the first inning after suffering a pulled muscle in the side. And Turkey took over and has allowed just one hit. That's all the Dodgers have in the ball game. 2-2 two -two pitch to Duke. Swung on a grounder hit right back to the mound on one big hop. Play to first is in time and it's one away. 
the Snyder bounces out to the first, and Carl Furlo comes on now. Say, fans, stay with us between games. Then Scully has some very interesting guests he'll be talking to, and should be a fine show, so keep tuned in and keep an ear right with us. Schaefer Bear sending you play-by-play on this fine Sunday afternoon, Easter Sunday, from Ebbets Field. Doubleheader between the Pirates and the Dodgers. Furlow waiting, flat out and grounded out. Takes the first pitch for a strike one. Carl hitting 385 right now. Five hits, 13 tries. Here's the next one. Curved and it's low for ball. One and one. One ball, one strike on Ferrello. Time called now. Perky comes off toward the third baseline to pick up a red rubber ball and toss it off to umpire Kenny Burkhart. Burkhart, uh, up from the Texas League, is making his umpiring debut behind the plate today. Started out at third base and now has worked himself around to the plate. So he's uh, getting his first National League chance as an umpire. There's a fly ball belt at the center field. Burden comes in a couple steps. Makes the grab for the out and two away. Furlow flies out straight away to Bill Burton. Two down. And here's Hodges. That's the only Dodger hit in the game. A single in the fifth inning. He flies out in the second. Gill is hitting 357. And at the moment, Gill could be leading the club. Uh, Furlow now has five to 14. And he and uh, Hodges are tied as they are, as Hodges stands there right now. First pitch is in for a strike. Two down, then on seventh inning. Berkey winds and fires, and Hodges checks up and has it called anyway for a strike two. You folks over around Jersey, don't forget tomorrow the Dodgers open up against the Phillies at Jersey City at Roosevelt Stadium. So make your plans to be there. Fastball is outside, one and two. Bob Perkey pitching to Gil Hodges. Randy Jackson on deck, and then Roy Campanella. Curveball is called with a high fly ball to center field. Burden drifts back. Near the wall now, and left center, he's there, and he makes the grab for the out to retire the side. So the Dodgers go up and down again, one, two, three. In the seventh inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. And at the end of seven, the score, the Pirates six, the Dodgers have none. Al, what you say there? Well, have you seen the 1957 edition of the Dodger yearbook? It's a dandy. 48 pages of anecdotes, stories, pictures, and records of the Dodgers. And that terrific Willard Mullen cartoon on the cover. And have you seen the brand new Schaefer Lucky Strike Baseball Guide and Record Book? Man is just crammed full of information. All-time records, complete rosters of all the major league teams, diagrams of the ballpark, a radio TV directory for every club, a fine piece on Pee Wee Reese and also Emmett Kelly. Boy, this is some book. Well, listen to this. Both these fine books can be yours for only 50 cents. That's what I said. Both the 1957 Dodger Yearbook and the brand new Schaefer Lucky Strike Baseball Guide and Record Book can be yours for just half a dollar. Now, here's how to get yours. Send 50 cents along with your name and address to Dodger Baseball Books, Box 119, Brooklyn, New York. That's Dodger Baseball Books, Box 119, Brooklyn, New York. Yes, sir, the biggest bargain of the year and the finest in the baseball reading league. It's a fine gift for that youngster of yours, too. And remember, this offer is being made for a limited time only. So order yours today. All right, Jerry. Top of the eighth inning, Mazeroski, first batter up, he's none for three, and hitting 100 now, he has one for ten so far in the season. First pitch is high for ball one. Pitcher Bob Perky do the follow, and then Roberto Clemente. Fire hitting, six nothing. Here's a ground ball to the left side. Zimmer comes in, scoops up, fires across, in time for the out, one away. Mazeroski grounds out Zimmer to Hodges. And now Bob Perky coming on. Has nothing for two. 
And the fans appreciating the fine work that Percy has done on the hill, give him a hand. He's combined with Vernon Law, who worked the first inning. He shut off the Dodgers here on just one base hit. Single by Gil Hodges in the fifth. Kofax delivers, and the fastball is on the corner for strike one. Kofax came on in the seventh, committed an error on Burden spot, and then yielded a home run to Skinner for two more pirate runs. Curveball is in low, and it's ball one. Even up now, 1-1. One, one. The Pirates scored on a pair of doubles in the second by Grote and pinch batter Powers, and then had three home runs in a row by Thomas Smith and Grote off Newcomb in the third inning. Fastball for a strike, and it's one and two. After the three home runs, Rene Valdez came on and worked three and two-thirds innings and allowed the Pirates nothing. Curveball breaks low, and it's 2-2. Valdez is in a jam in the fifth on a walk and an error. Then he came out of it without allowing a run. So the Pirates then rocked along until the seventh inning. They picked up those two more off Kofax. There's a foul ball back into the stands, and the count stays 2-2 two and two on the batter, Bob Perky. Clementi in the on-deck circle off to the left. First game of the big Easter Sunday doubleheader. And a nice crowd on hand, and you still have time to get out and see the second game. Fastball is in for strike three. Perky called out on strike. And by Kofax, strikeout number two. Off man Roberto Clemente coming on. We're in the eighth inning. Clemente has two for four and is hitting 375 as he has three for eight on the season. Andy Koufax, young left hander, wine fired. A bounding ball down the first baseline. Fair ball in there for a base hit. Ball peeling off in the bullpen now. Thrill over to play it. Clemente around and into second base, standing with a double. Bouncing one just inside first. And as soon as the ball passed the bag, it kicked out foul and rolled all the way into the bullpen. Of course, the outfield was playing around to the left against Clemente, and Thrill had a long way to go to retrieve. An easy two-bagger for Clemente, his third hit of the day, and hit number one, hit number two off Kofax. And... Number nine for the Pirates. So with two outs, Bill Verdon comes on now, and he has nothing for four. Hitting 200. Left-hand batter. Fastball comes inside, ball one. Second game, Klein due to go for Pittsburgh, and Don Drysdale for the Dodgers. One ball, no strikes. As Koufax checks the runner, delivers. A pie for ball. Two nothing. Ball pops out of Campanella's glove. Roy retrieves and fires it back to the mound. Two and nothing to count. Fires have a base runner, Clemente. Two outs, eighth inning. Ball breaks outside and it's three or nothing now. On left hand batter Bill Burton. Again, Kofax ready. Fires a strike. Burton taking it. It's three one. First game, an hour and about 50 minutes to this point. Schaefer Bear sending you the play-by-play from Everett Field. First game of a doubleheader. There's a high bounder off the plate. First base away. Kofax takes it himself all the way for the out. Kofax on the dead run field of the high bounder, halfway between the mound and first base, and Hodges had come wide, leaving the bag open, and so Kofax just kept right on going and made the put out, beating Burden the first to retire the track. In the eighth inning, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on. We're at the end of the top half of the eighth inning. The score in the ball game, Pittsburgh six, and the Dodgers have none.
You know, after nine innings of hustling out there on the ball field, the player kind of likes to sit back a while and relax. Well, I guess you go for some of the same after you've been working at the job or around the house, huh? Well, let me tell you, to really enjoy relaxing, you put a cool glass of Schaefer beer in your hand. Talk about pleasure? Man, that's it. A glass of golden amber Schaefer. Tall and cool. Topped off with a snowy white crown of foam. Why, it even looks relaxing. And when it comes to flavor, Schaefer's got it. The wonderful light and dusty flavor you want, but don't always find. You see, Schaefer is brewed only of rich barley malt, tangy hops, and other fine natural ingredients. So next time you're in the mood for some really enjoyable relaxing, do it with Schaefer beer. It's real beer. Well, time running out on the Dodgers' last half of the eighth inning. Jackson, Campanella, and Zimmer. Coming on now to face right-hander Bob Perky. Randy has grounded the double play and flat out to center. Batting average 143 as he stands at the play. First pitch, a pie for ball one. Kenny Lehman now alone in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Don Elson was there a while ago. There's a bounding ball to shortstop. Big hop to Gross. Play to Skinner in time, and it's one away. Jackson bounding out short to first in the eighth inning for the Dodgers. And here's Roy Campanella now. Roy grounded out to short and fly to center in two tries. So Campy hitting 231 is 0 for 2 today. First game of the Twin Bill, eighth inning. Pirates six. The Dodgers nothing. Brooklyn going into today's game unbeaten in the season. There's a high pop fly on the first baseline foul, drifting over for it is Skinner near the stands, and make, can't make the grab. Ball fell out of play in the box seat. One count on Campy. Turkey looks for a sign. Winds and fires. Curveball foul back and it's strike two. And down goes Campanella, strike three. For Bob Perky, that is strikeout number three in the game. And on coming will be Don Zimmer. Don has struck out and flat out to right field. back here and it's strike one. Nothing in one to Zimmer. Two for 13 for Zip this year. One home run and one run batted in. Another foul right back here, right below our broadcast booth. Strike two on Zimmer. The Dodgers have two outs in the eighth inning. Nobody on base. Fastball comes in high on the inside, and it's one and two. Perky delivers. Curveball bounced out toward third. In for it comes Thomas. Big hop. Play across. In time for the outside retired. Zimmer bounces out. And once more, the Dodgers go one, two, three before Bob Perky. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So that's the end of eight innings of play with a score in the ball game. The Pirates six and the Brooklyn Dodgers have none. Well, before we move along to the ninth inning of the game, let's pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodger Radio Network. 
Dial 1460 WOKO Albany. WOKO, the Capital District's most talked about station, with downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. Immediately following the first game, five minutes of the latest news, and then, of course, the second game of the doubleheader, the Dodgers versus Pittsburgh. One minute before four, WOKO time. We'll be along to the ninth inning in a moment. Score in the ball game, 6 nothing. the Pirates leading. They picked up one in the second, three in the third, and two in the seventh inning. The three in the third were home runs in a row by Thomas, Smith, and Joe off Don Newcomb, the Dodgers starter. Newt worked three and, uh, two and one third innings, allowed four runs, seven hits. Valdez worked three and two thirds, allowed no runs, no hits. And Kofax now working his third inning, has allowed two runs and two hits. First batter up for the Pirates, Bob Skinner had a home run last time up, and he has one hit in three official at-bats today. Kofax, left-hander, on the way with it. And the curveball is in for strike one. strike and it's nothing in two. Curveball breaks down and it's one and two. Sandy Colfax Winds and delivers. Full curve, the south side. One ball, two strikes on Bob Skinner. Frank Thomas on deck, and then Paul Smith to follow. Pirates batting in the ninth, leading 6 to nothing over the Dodgers in the first of two here today at Ebbets Field. There's a foul straight back. And it's still one and two. Top foul off to the left of the plate. The scoreboard shows that the Giants got a run in the ninth inning and beat the Phils 2-1. to one. Roberts and Antonelli in a real duel there. We'll get the ticker information in a moment on our Shaper scoreboard. The Yankees lead Boston. Picking up two more in the eighth. 4-1 to one at the fence, seven and a half. There's a swing and a miss, and Skinner goes down on strike. As Kofax really fired him a good fastball that time, and for Sandy, that's strike out number three. Up now will be Frank Thomas, who has one hit at the home run. Slide out, safe on a sacrifice and error, and hit by a pitch ball. So Frank is one for two. Kofax into the windup. Fastball is swung on a miss, strike one. Milwaukee leads Cincinnati 2-1 to one at the end of 4 and a half. The Cubs lead the Cardinals 3-1 at the end of 3 and a half. Three and a miss, strike two on Frank Thomas. Our score, Pirates 6 and the Dodgers nothing, playing in the ninth inning, top half. There's a high foul. Coming off to the left, Campanella giving it a play in front of the dugout and makes the grab off in front of the pirate dugout to the left side. Campy had to get around plate umpire Ken Burkhardt and then came on out to about ten steps from the pirate dugout for the catch. Two away and here's Paul Smith. Smith has one hit a home run, grounded out, sacrificed and struck out. He's one for three. Schaefer Beer sending it to you from Everett Field. A swing and a miss on a fastball, and Kofax now is really firing. When Sandy came on in the seventh inning, he was not uh, quite as sharp as he is now. He was really cranking up and pouring it in there. Curveball, Lord, it's one and one. And as we said, Kofax had a very good spring. Time now as umpire Burkhart wants to inspect the ball. Looks it over, throws it out, and gives Campanella a new one to pass on out to Sandy. Paul Smith subbing in left field for Lee Walls, who was spiked in an unusual play at third base yesterday. He was spiked by the umpire. 
had four stitches taken on the middle finger of his right hand. One one. Curveball popped up foul back of the plate. Campanelli coming back for this one. This time on the Dodgers side. All the way to the dugout, makes the grab right in front of the Brooklyn dugout to the guy on the side. So Campy handles two of them, one on each side, and that's all for the Pirates in the ninth inning. No runs on, no hit. No errors and none left on. So at the end of the top of the ninth inning, the score, the Pittsburgh Pirates six, the Brooklyn Dodgers have none. Hey, uh, what's the plan for tonight? Quiet supper and chance to get together with the family, maybe? Well, listen. After the kids are tucked away in bed, when you relax with a paper or your favorite TV show, get together with Schaefer. Sure, you and your husband or wife have yourselves a couple of cans of America's oldest lager beer. You'll find there's a golden gleam to Schaefer beer, bright as a sunny smile, a cool, clean aroma, kind of like springtime. It's a happy flavor that goes with your good times together. And it's yours in a jiffy with Schaefer. Why, in the twinkling of a can opener, you can see the golden brew tumble into your glass and smell that fresh bouquet. Do it tonight. For real enjoyment, get together with Schaefer. It's real beer. Play fans, don't forget to stay tuned in now. Between games, we'll have a very fine show. Then Scully has some interesting guests lined up and uh, going to be coming to you right between the ball games. And, of course, we'll have play-by-play on the entire second game of today's doubleheader between the Pirates and the Dodgers. So stay tuned in. Don't go away. Just uh, punch a hole in the can of Schaefer and sit back and relax. Keep your shoes off and have yourself a real fine afternoon. Here's Elmer Vallow now to start off and pinch it for Sandy Koufax. Elmer Vallow pinch hitting for Koufax in the ninth inning. Dodgers restricted to one base hit today, a single by Hodges in the fifth inning. Bob Perky has worked seven of the eight innings. Vernon Law works the opener. Here's the windup and the pitch to the left-hand batter. Ballow takes it for strike one. In the bullpen, Kenny Lehman's drawing for the Dodgers in case Brooklyn should get a tie here in the last of the ninth inning. Six-nothing, Pirates lead. The pitch to Ballow, curveball for strike two. As Perky took a little off that time and got it over. Vernon Law, the starter, was relieved in the first inning. Actually, uh, he was relieved as he was uh, due to bat in the second. There's a high foul peeled off to the right. And found out of play. He went out of there and uh, had a pulled muscle in his side. He worked the first inning in order, got the Dodgers out. And then Perky came in and took up where uh, Law had started it and was allowed just one hit. Pitches outside for a ball in the count one and two. Valdez walked in the third, and Amaro's batting for Valdez walked in the sixth inning. Here's a curveball up high, and it's ball two. Two and two to Valo, and those are the only two runners the Dodgers have had left on. Hodges, who single, was promptly double-played by Jackson. So the Dodgers have been restricted here by Perky pretty well in this first game. Fine and Drysdale do to go in the second game. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled down off Hank Foyle's big toe and it rolls back to the dugout. 2-2 two, two, the count to Vallo. Last of the ninth. The Dodgers need six to tie and seven to pull it out. This game is a two-hour and five-minute mark. We'll have about 20 minutes between games. And don't forget our visit with Vince Scully and his uh, very fine guests. So stay tuned in. Vallo checks up, but it's ball three. Three and two. So Elmer Vallo trying to get it to start, and in the number nine spot in the batting order, this is the third visit to the plate, and both times previously there have been a base on ball. Here's the pitch. And it's high for a ball, and again, the number nine spot is the spot that the Pittsburgh Pirates pitchers can't get out of there. Turkey has walked the number nine uh, spot three times. We say the number nine spot because once it was Valdez, once Amaros, and now Vallo. And that's the third walk given up by Perky. And it brings on Jim Gilliam. The totals on the giant Philly game, two runs, six hits, no errors for the Giants, one run, nine hits, no errors for Philadelphia. Antonelli winning over Roberts.
Okay, Perky checks now at first base, and here's the pitch. Fastball, high outside, ball one. Gilliam at bat, Samoli on deck, and Snyder to follow. And the fans, of course, want the Dodgers to do something here and get busy. Last chance. Pirates lead 6 nothing. Now Perky ready again, delivers. Gilliam takes it low for a ball, and the count goes 2 and nothing. Schaefer Bear, delighted to send you all the action, play-by-play from Ebbets Field. Roy Face now working in the bullpen for Pittsburgh. Just in case anything uh, happens to go wrong with Mr. Perky here. Two-nothing count, Gilliam waits and takes it for a strike, two and one. of the ninth. Dodgers batting. First game of a doubleheader. Pitch to Gilliam. High outside as Jim ran up to bunt. Got the bat out of there and it's ball three. Three and one now on Jim Gilliam. Once again the stretch by Perky and the pitch. Ball four, he walked him, and uh, two on him. Walk number four, given up by the Pirates right-hander. And the batter will be Gino Simone, as none for three. Struck out, grounded out, and slide out the center. Conference at the mound now between Perky, Dick Zoda, and catcher Hank Boyle. Thomas comes over now to join in the conference as Foyles comes back to the plate. So the Dodgers get a start here in the ninth and the crowd becomes alerted to the possibility of a Dodger rally. And they kind of perk up a bit. And Perky trying to calm things down. Good crowd out today for this Easter Sunday ball game. And here now is... Uh, Sign called as uh, Skinner comes up in first base toward the mound. And they're calling for some sunglasses. From Rennie, the right fielder, and uh, Mazeroski, the second baseman, coming in, and also Skinner asking for a pair of glasses. So the bat boy and a couple of the others bring them out to him. From Rennie, Mazeroski, and uh, Skinner. All getting the sunshades on. The old shawl peeks through the overcast and uh, has to put the glasses on. Kenny Lehman, meanwhile, busy in the bullpen. Last of the night, Samoy the batter. Dodgers have two on and are trying to pull this one out and stay undefeated. The Pirates trying to get to a 500 rating of 1-1 and lost two. Milo on second, Gilliam on first. It's Perky now, comes to the rubber, ready to pitch. The fans come alive here at Ebbets Field. Time again now, as Bobby Bregan comes out to have a talk with his pitcher, Bob Perky. Bregan was waiting uh, as long as possible to give face opportunity to get all ready. And it may be now that Bregan's going to make a change. We had a conference with the man. The time called for sunglasses. And now Bregan calls for a conference. And he points to the bullpen. And Elroy Face is going to come on here and replace Bob Perky. So, that'll be all for Perky. And we'll check him up. He's allowed just one hit. Worked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven innings. And he worked to two batters. In the ninth inning, he's allowed one hit and no runs. Of course, the runners on base belong to him. He walked four, struck out three. So Roy Faith will come on and be the third pirate pitcher. Vernon Law started and went out with a full muscle in the first inning after retiring the side in order. Perky came on, got the side out in the second inning, gave up a walk in the third, got the side out in the fourth. Gave up a lead single in the fifth inning that got him out on double play. 
Yielded a walk in the sixth. Retired the Saturday order in the seventh. Again in the eighth. And now it's walked two in the ninth and will leave the ball game. And just a fine hand. Bob Perky, a rookie right-hander for Pittsburgh, doing a fine job. Now goes on off as manager Bobby Bracken. He tries to come with his full pen ace, Roy Faith. So little Roy comes on and starts warming up. And while he does, let's take a look at the Schaefer scoreboard and give you a reading. Final score, the Giants beat the Phillies 2-1 to in a good enough day of Polo Ground. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Giants. One run, nine hits, one error for Philadelphia. Antonelli the winner, Roberts the loser. 0-2 for, for Roberts, 1-1 one one for Antonelli. Kazanski a home run in the uh, second, none on. Sauer in the second, none on. And at the end of six innings, Milwaukee leads Cincinnati 2-1. to one. Spahn against Clipstein. Chicago leads St. Louis 3-1 to one at the end of four. Kaiser against Weimar and Cheney. And that's the first of a doubleheader. In the American League, the Yankees uh, have four. The Red Sox have one. There's been a pitching change in that game. Grim replaced third of it in the eighth inning. Sister working for Boston. All right, ready to play now as Gino Simoli comes on here in the ninth inning. Two on, run out. And the Pirates lead 6 nothing. And Roy Pace is on now to do the pitching for Pittsburgh. Roy Pace stepping in. Stretch, check of the runner. Simone waits and takes the fastball in off the hands inside. Ball one. We have a pair of right-handers now working in the bullpen for the Pirates. We'll check them up for him, get the numbers, and pass them along to just a second. One ball, no strike. Base ready, delivers. Fastball for strike one to Simone. The count evens at one and one. Snyder on deck and throw on the hole, and the Dodger fans... Feeling the big end of the order coming up here. Really whooping up for a Dodger rally. Face stretches again. Runners move off first and second. The look in the pitch to Gino. Swing a rounding ball to third. Thomas down to second. One on to first. Double play. Drew, he dropped the ball at first base. The throw was in time, but it was dropped by Skinner for an error. And Simone draws a life there. Fourth out at second base on Gilliam is five to four. Third to second. And Simone safe. And... There's no error rules. You don't assume on the double play try. No error. On the play, Rallo takes third. The throw had him beat, but it dropped uh, by uh, Skinner, and it might have been there was a little bit to his right on the outfield side of the bag. No error charge. Runners at first and third, and Strider is the batter. One out, two on. And Simone wraps one to third. Now the stretch by Faith, and here's the pitch. Swung on a chop down foul right at the plate. Strike one. Even though the throw had Simoli beat, it was a little bit uh, on the outfield side. And Skinner, a right-hander who feels with the left hand, had to cross over and make a grab at it and drop the ball. Although the throw was there ahead of Simoli. No error charge. Strike one on Snyder. Face ready. Checks and delivers. Duke swings and misses. Strike two. Snyder all the way around on that one. Paul and Churn now working in the bullpen for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Kenny Lehman for the Dodgers. Nothing and two to Duke. Face delivers. He swings and misses. Strike three. Down goes Snyder on strike. That is strikeout number one for Pace. And up now will be Carl Farilla with two outs and two on here in the ninth inning. Duke was a little angry at himself that time. Came back and slammed his hat. Batting helmet on the ground. Last of the ninth, two outs. Farilla at bat. Pace now checks the runners. First and third. Delivers to Carl inside. Ball one. Starting the ninth, Bob Perky issued walks to Vallow and Gilliam, and then was replaced by manager Bobby Bregan, and Faith induced Simone to bounce one to third. Thomas got a force at second base on Gilliam, and the throw to first drop, and Simone drew life there. Vallow at third, so we have two on, two out. The pitch to Carl. Swan and Belden walk there. This one's tied. This one is back, 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 and it's in there for a home run for Toronto. Perillo wraps 
gets his second home of the year and keeps the Dodgers alive with a line shot in the lowest fans in left field. And it's 6-3 to three now in favor of the Pirates. And Perello now becomes the fourth player in Brooklyn history to reach the 900 mark in the RBI column. He now has 902. Dodgers at bat now trying to start it all over again. Base delivers. And Gill takes it in for a strike. Strike one on Gil Hodges. Three runs in here in the ninth inning, and two of those runs charged against Perky. Strike two on Hodges, nothing in two. So on Perky, seven innings, two runs, one hit, three strikeouts, and four walks. Six to three, in favor of the Pirates. Pace delivers to Gill, swung on his foul back upstairs, out of play. two on Hodges. Two walks and a home run by Perillo. Elroy face into the lineup and down it comes. Pulling a top foul back upstairs again by Hodges and it's still strike two on Gill. Levine now is working in the Dodger bullpen in the in right field area. And Churn and Hall still busy for the Pirates down in left field. Strike two to Hodges. Face winds and fires. Curveball is outside. One and two. Perillo belted one to left field in the lower stands right over the Schaefer sign. The one and two pitch. Swung on a miss and the ball game is over as Hodges went for a breaking ball down low and is out on strike. So in the ninth inning... For the Dodgers, three runs picked up on one base hit. No errors and none left on. And so the Pirates and the Dodgers, their first loss of the year, by a 6-3 to three score here this afternoon in the first game of a doubleheader. The uh, totals on the ball game for the Pirates, six runs on nine hits, no errors, and the Pirates left eight men on. For the Dodgers, three runs on two base hits, three errors, and the Dodgers left just two runners stranded. The winning pitcher was Bob Perky, and the loser was Don Newsom. Newsom now 0-1 on the year, and Perky is 1-0. and So the ball game winds up for the Pirates, getting one run in the second, three in the third, and two in the seventh. And the Dodgers using a home run by Perillo with two on in the ninth inning for their runs in the game. The Pirates highlighted the game with three home runs in succession in the third inning by Thomas, Smith, and Gross. Those came with one out against John Newcomb. And Newcomb at that spot was replaced by Valdez, who then went on and worked three and two-thirds innings and allowed uh, no runs and no hits. Sandy Koufax came on to work the final innings and allowed the Pirates uh, two runs and two base hits, walked none and struck out three. So it's six, nine, and oh for the Pirates and three, two, and three for the Dodgers. Three runs, two hits, and three errors, and two left on. Six runs, nine hits, and no errors for Pittsburgh with eight men left on. Vernon Law, as we told you, started the ball game for the Pirates, got the side out of order in the first inning, and then had to retire as it was just turned at bat in the uh, second inning. He had a pulled muscle in his side. And then Bob Perky came on and worked uh, all the way until the ninth inning and he walked two, and uh, then was relieved by Roy Face. Well, that wraps it up. We'll be sending more play-by-the-play your way in about 20 minutes when the Dodgers meet the Pirates in the second game. You'll be sure and be on hand. Meanwhile, this is Jerry Doggett speaking for Vince Scully and Al Helper, saying so long for the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes, on behalf of Lucky Strike, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. And for the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of America's oldest lager beer, Schaefer. Between now and then, whenever you're thirsty, for real enjoyment, make it Schaefer. It's real beer. The final score again, the Pirates 6, the Dodgers 3.